Okay, we observe that the vectors 1, 3, and negative 6, 4 are linearly independent. Uh, this one is certainly not a multiple of this one, and these are vectors at R2, so uh, that's all we need to say. Although, in, generally, in general, <coughs> we would want to do something like determine whether the determinant of the, the uh, matrix with these vectors is non-zero. Uh, in any case, uh, the other thing we can determine is that these vectors are orthogonal because they're dot product, which I'll write as the 2, 3, negative 6, 4 row column, is zero. Okay, so this is an orthogonal basis. The, these two vectors would constitute an orthogonal basis of, excuse me, R2. An orthonormal basis <coughs> is a basis of orthogonal unit vectors. Okay, now these aren't unit vectors. Uh, their lengths are not one. A unit vector is a vector of length one. In order to get a unit vector, we divide any non-zero vector by its magnitude. And of course, if it's a zero vector, we can't divide by its magnitude because its magnitude would be zero, and you can't divide by zero. Anyhow, uh, for any non-zero vector, v over its magnitude is a unit vector. Okay, because if you divide a vector by its length, you get a vector of length one. Um, it also has a direction of the v vector because this is nothing but a multiple of v by a positive number. <coughs> so, unit vector in the direction of 2, 3 would be what? B, v over magnitude of v where v equals 2, 3. That's v over square root of v dot v because the magnitude of a vector is the square root of its dot product with itself. <coughs> and, uh, of course, in R2, it's also equal to what you get using the Pythagorean theorem. Identical results that you can easily check out. So that's 2, 3, and I write the dot product in as the row by the column. Uh, that comes out 13, so we have magnitude square root of 13 into 2, 3, and then the rest is very simple. The simplified result is 2 square root of 13 over 13, 3 square root of 13 over 13. So, um, you get an orthonormal, well, okay. And then we can do the same for uh, the vector negative 6, 4. Okay, so um, for negative 6, 4, the vector that we would get, and I don't have room to write it out, but that vector uh, would be negative 3 square root of 13 over 13, yeah, and 2 square root of 13 over 13. Um, and you can work that through the same way we worked this one through. Uh, this comes out in a very straightforward manner. So your orthonormal basis is then V1 over magnitude of V1, V2 over magnitude of V2. Now remember, we could do that since V1, V2 is already an orthogonal basis. You can't get an orthonormal basis uh, in this straightforward manner. We'll see shortly how you can get one. Um, but you can't get it just by dividing vector by magnitude, the, each vector by its magnitude, unless those vectors are already orthogonal. Okay, so you start with an orthogonal basis, you divide each vector by its magnitude, you get an orthonormal basis. <coughs> well, you want to look at uh, this one idea here, and then we're going to do a little bit of a proof. Okay, the idea we have here that we've already seen is that if you project vector v1 on v2, so here's your projection. Now, I didn't take time in class to write it up, but this is a projection on v2 of v1. If you subtract this projection from v1, as we saw in the preceding class, um, you get a vector that's perpendicular to the vector v2. In general, we're going to say this is orthogonal because orthogonality is a generalization of perpendicular. Um, you can talk about um, orthogonal basis uh, when you're not even in a space that's actually geometric. Um, and you can talk about uh, an orthogonal basis with respect to an inner product that is not the dot product. <coughs> but perpendicular 
really refers to being at a 90 degree angle in Euclidean space. Okay, well, anyhow, um, in this case we see very clearly that uh, the V1 vector, and that the projection vector plus this vector here in green, at, um, we, we get V1. This vector and this vector add up, <coughs> add up to V1. So that this vector it has to be V1 minus this vector, and you can draw that out uh, as we have. Okay, so if we define W to be the V1 minus the projection vector, then uh, it's going to turn out that W and V2 are orthogonal. So that uh, W, V2 would be a basis of R2 if these are vectors in R2. Not necessarily these vectors, any vectors in R2. Now that's a really important picture and a really important idea that we're going to develop into what's called the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process. Uh, you can also orthonormalize um, using Gram-Schmidt. Um, okay, so we're going to go on and talk about a couple of kind of related properties that are going to be very important when we look at orthonormal basis.